Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah, if you're new here, and I'm getting a little tired of the way that I've been doing my monthly reading wrap-ups. In today's video, I came up with this fun concept where I have to review a book based on the number of stars I gave it. The star rating determines the number of sentences I have in order to articulate all of my thoughts and feelings about the book. So, for example, if I gave something two stars, I have two sentences to tell you about it, and then I'm cutting myself off. I have a tendency to go on and on and on, whether I'm ranting or raving about a book. And so this is not only going to be kind of a fun way to mix up the way that I do my wrap up, but also a challenge for myself as well to be brief. So we're going to start this video off going from the lowest rated book to the highest rated book from two stars to five stars. And we'll see how this challenge goes. Starting with Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones. And I gave this book two stars, which means I have two sentences to tell you about this book and why I liked it or not. So this is a horror novella about an unreliable teenage narrator and his group of friends and kind of what happens to them after they discover this abandoned mannequin from like a department store. That was one sentence. This book wasn't my cup of tea in general, but if you want further thoughts and feelings about this book, I have a reading vlog that contains additional thoughts and feelings about that, about this book as well as the next book I'm going to talk about. The next book we're talking about is The Hitak Witches by Devin A. Mahesua. This is about, which I gave two stars, Detective Monique Bluehawk is investigating an impossible murder at a children's museum in Oklahoma, and this is an adult horror mystery novel. This had poor pacing, poor execution, broadly, biphobia, fat phobia, discriminating against a person with facial piercings and tattoos, and the title of the book is a spoiler. Those are my two sentences. Now, Upgrade by Blake Crouch, I gave 2.5 stars. So how that's going to work is I'm basically going to give myself like a tiny little sentence, either a few adjectives or just like a very clipped sentence to reflect two and a half sentences, if that makes sense. So Upgrade by Blake Crouch is a sci-fi thriller about a man named Logan Ramsey, who is infected by particles that rearrange his DNA and give him superhuman abilities. And there is a larger plot going on as well. Again, I have a full review up for this book. So if you like further thoughts and feelings, please check that out. I recommend Dark Matter instead. A Deadly Inside Scoop by Abby Collette. I gave 2.5 stars. This is a cozy mystery novel about a woman named Bronwyn who is trying to do the grand opening of her ice cream parlor, reopening of her ice cream shop during a middle, the middle of a blizzard and a body shows up. She discovers a body. This has a pretty atrocious mustache twirly villain monologue scene at the end, which I couldn't help but roll my eyes for. Cozy mystery may not be for me. Next is Savvy Sheldon Feels Good as Hell by Taj McCoy, which is 2.5 stars. This is an adult romance novel about Savannah Sheldon, Savvy, who decides to change her life, her lifestyle, after she goes through a pretty horrifying breakup and she ends up falling for the guy renovating her kitchen. I cared more about Savvy's hobbies, friendships, her mental health, her physical health, and everything she was doing personally, and even her family, more so than I did about the romance between her and Spencer, who is the contractor. I do want to use my half sentence to do a trigger warning for this book. It could be triggering for people who have body image issues, eating disorders, those types of things. 
I think the message overall is promoting a healthy lifestyle and not the scale, but I just want to throw that out there. I know I use more than 2.5 sentences, but I think that trigger warning is important. Another 2.5 star read for me is Scorpica by J.R. McAllister. In a matriarchal world made up of five queendoms, a plague is sweeping the lands, causing only boys to be born in this adult fantasy start to a series. This had a super compelling opening. F the first few chapters I was really sucked in, but I quickly lost interest with all of the points of views, killed off my favorite character real quick. Now we actually have books that I liked. <laughs> Winter Cow Inspired David Heska Wombly Whedon. In this adult thriller, Virgil Wounded Horse deals vigilante justice on his reservation because the police don't care and he is tracking down people responsible for bringing heroin into the reservation. I thought this had a great ending and a really excellent tension-filled climax. It was a little slow paced for me, however I still enjoyed this read and I recommend it. Controversial one, maybe. Babel by R.F. Kuang. I finally finished this book and I gave this four stars. Robin Swift, an orphan Chinese boy, is kidnapped to England by the mysterious Professor Lovell to study languages, the key, which is the key to unlocking the magic of silver in this world. I have the same critique about this book that I do about the Poppy War by the same author, which is I love the first half of the book where we are in the school setting but the second half kind of fell flat for me personally. This has so many important themes and critiques on colonialism and academia as a tool of imperialism as well as racism, especially anti-Asian racism. Even though this wasn't a new five star, oh my God, all time favorite for me, I really think this is an important book and I think it was a really compelling read. Then The Misadventures of an Amateur Naturalist by Kine Win Langley. This is a four star read as well. This is a young adult sapphic beauty and the beast retelling. I also have a full review for this book up on my channel as well, so I won't get into it too much. I love the writing and I thought this was super atmospheric. I just wish there was more time spent developing the relationship ship between Celeste, our Belle character, and the Beast. Onward and upward we have The Veiled Throne by Ken Liu, which is book three in the Dandelion Dynasty fantasy series. We are following one of my favorite characters for a very large chunk of this book, which I was very happy about. This has a pretty big slow section right in the middle, but it honestly picks up really, really nicely. However, I didn't think there was much of a climax to this book in particular, and it felt like a lot of setup for the final installment. I love this series. Then we have the graphic novel, This Place, 150 years retold by a variety of contributors, and this is a 4.5 out of five star read. It's a graphic novel featuring non-fiction vignettes of Indigenous Canadian history as well as a timeline of the Canadian government's pretty anti-Indigenous policies throughout history. I really love this medium for learning this information and I really like the art style a lot. This features a lot of different tribes from across Canada which I really appreciated the, the diversity of that there. And I really like this. I highly recommend the graphic novel. Next, we kind of have a weird one. Uh, 12 Angry Men by Reginald Rose. This was a five star read for me. And I read this for a reading challenge. And this is a play actually about a white, all white jury deliberating the case of a young black teenager who allegedly murdered his father. I actually remember my high school putting on a performance of this play and I also watched a version of this with my father when I was a child so weirdly this play has like some nostalgia for me. I thought it was so interesting how in this play you know that all you know the races of the boy and the father and everyone involved in this case without anyone specifically meant calling it out but you know based on the racist remarks and the attitudes of the jurors 
what race everybody is. I enjoyed quite a bit how the evidence was unfolded in this play and I actually think it's really good. Now we have All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson and this was a five star read as well. This is a young adult memoir about a gay boy growing up and discovering his identity but also giving some really great life lessons to other black queer youth. This was so well written especially for the target audience. I cried at least two times. There are trigger warnings at the beginning of this book which will help guide readers since there are since there is an explicit on-page assault that happens. However, before writing this book off, consider that the author was assaulted as a child and didn't have the words to describe what happened to him. So just food for thought with this one. Then we have Real by Kennedy Ryan, another five-star read for me. This is an adult romance about Neva, who is an actress and canon, a Hollywood director, falling in love as they film a big budget biopic about a queer singer named Desi Blue. Neva has lupus and her journey is pretty scary in this book, but I felt and feel a lot of the same feelings about my disability that Neva does. I cried multiple times from the cuteness of the romance, but also from the heartfelt connection everyone had, like the side characters as well. Neva's journey with her disease. I actually surprisingly enjoyed all of the tidbits about the filming of the movie and the story of Desi Blue that we did get to see. This book is 400 pages, which is quite long for a romance book, but honestly, I think this one is really worth it. Getting close to the end. <laughs> now we have A Man and His Cat, Volume 5 by Umi Sakurai. Five star read. <laughs> the fifth installment of this slow-paced slice of life manga series about a man adopting a cat after his wife passes away. This is also about the man opening up to his friends and building relationships with people and kind of coming out of his grief. This volume was just as precious and cute as the previous volumes and the whole series feels like an emotional cathartic hug. I cry every time. I highly recommend this series to everyone and especially cat owners. Lastly, and I'm gonna say my favorite read of the month was Kai Kai by Vaishnavi Patel and this was my last five star read. This is an adult fantasy retelling of a traditional villain character, Kai Kai from the great Indi Indian epic the Ramayana. This is the perfect book for me. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> this is a perfect blend of politics and heart with all of the familial connections happening in this book. This is a single point of view standalone fantasy which is my absolute jam. My favorite part of this book is that Kaiki has magical abilities however she doesn't really need her magic to achieve her goals. She mostly is able to get what she wants without her magic. That's it. <laughs> that is the end of the challenge. How did I do? There were a few in there. I kind of fudged a little bit and I kept looking at my notes, but I think overall I did pretty well. And hopefully this video's length reflects this challenge. I hope you had fun watching this one. What did you read in October? I would love to know. Happy Halloween and I will see you in another video of mine very soon. Bye everyone.